Hello, hello, hello. Hello, everyone. Today, we have the review of the Vivo Vi 40 SE smartphone. The V40 SE has a Qualcomm Snapdragon 4 Gen 2 processor with 8 cores, two of them running at 2.2 GHz, and the remaining six at 1.95 GHz, with an Adreno 613 GPU. In addition to this, we have 8 GB of RAM and 256 GB of internal storage, with UFS 2.2 memory and the ability to expand via microSD. Also, in this model, we have the option to convert 8 GB of internal storage into RAM, so we would have a total of 16 GB of RAM, 8 GB physical, and 8 GB virtual. If by any chance you don't know what virtual RAM is or how it works, I'll leave you a video up here where I explain it quickly. It has a 5000 mAh lithium battery and 44 watt fast charging. With this, we reach an approximate autonomy of about two days, as long as we use the phone every day for things like WhatsApp, browsing, social media, or email. We'll get a full charge in about an hour. As always, if the phone is used a little more heavily, like watching a movie or a series or making a video, the battery life shortens. Regarding the screen, it has a panel sized at 6.67 inches. The technology it uses is AMOLED with a refresh rate up to 120 Hz. In terms of resolution, it hits full HD+, with 1080 by 2400 pixels, and has a brightness of 1200 nits. In this case, for the refresh rate, we can choose between 60, 120 Hz, or a smart refresh rate. Regarding the connections, it has dual-band Wi-Fi at 2.4 and 5 gigahertz, Bluetooth 5.0, NFC GPS. It has 5G coverage and the charging port is a USB-C OTG 2.0. What we don't have in this model is a 3.5mm mini jack port to connect headphones. Let's quickly look over the cameras it mounts. On the back, it features a triple camera composed of a main lens with a 50 megapixel sensor, a 1.8 focal aperture and PDF autofocus. An ultra-wide angle lens with an 8 megapixel sensor and a 2.2 focal aperture. Lastly, a macro lens with a 2 megapixel sensor and a 2.4 focal aperture. As for video recording, it can go up to full HD at 30 FPS. The front camera, on the other hand, features a lens with a 16 megapixel sensor, a 2.0 focal aperture, and PDAF autofocus. It comes standard with the Android 14 operating system and the FunTouch 14 customization layer. Finally, it can be found at an approximate price of around 300 euros. Below, as always, I've provided a direct link in case you want to get one. And now guys, after going through the features, let's do the unboxing. Alright guys, regarding the box's contents, I'd like to clarify various aspects. First and foremost, as you can observe, the base model of the phone, this one we have here, does not include a charger. As you can see, what the box contains is the phone itself which is the one we have here. We also have the instructions, a silicone back cover and the USB-C charging cable. I repeat, as you can see, it does not include a charger, neither a regular one nor the 44W fast charging one. In this instance, the folks at Vivo did send me a charger. It's the 44W one, I'll show you now. And it's the ideal one for fast charging the V40SE the fast charging charger, the 44W one, is this one you're seeing here. It's a regular charger, slightly larger than what we're used to, but it would be this one. Why am I explaining all this to you? Because we're currently in a situation where offer with the V40SE, I'm not sure if it's temporary, permanent, or just a launch deal, but we can get a package for the same price as those 300 euros the phone costs, which also includes the fast charging charger we have here, 44W, as well as some wireless headphones from Vivo. Over here on the screen, I'll show you the package so you can see it. If you're interested in the phone, it's a great time to get the complete package for 300 euros, including the phone with all the accessories that come with the base version and also get the 44W charger and headphones. So guys, once we've seen what's in the box and clarified this, let's take a really close look at the phone. The phone totals at a weight of 188 grams. The back, as you can see, is quite nice and is made of leather synthetic, which gives it a really nice feel and something super important, 
and that is that fingerprints don't show up at all. On the top of the phone, you'll only find a microphone. On the right side, we have the volume control and power buttons. On the other hand, at the bottom, we find the SIM and micro SD slot, another microphone, the USB-C charging port, and the external speaker. On the back, we find the camera module located in the top left corner, which includes the three lenses along with the LED flash. Finally, on the front, well, of course, we have the screen. At the top, in the middle, we find the front-facing camera embedded in the screen. And a little higher, in the little bezel, there is. We find the internal speaker. Now, after having taken a detailed look at the phone's physical features, let's take a look at the overall performance. In this section, I really don't have too many complaints. The 8 gigabytes of RAM plus the 8 virtual ones make the phone run smoothly for any daily task, like using WhatsApp, browsing the internet, watching YouTube, or checking email. What's more, having a refresh rate of 120 Hz provides freshness and good fluidity to the use of the phone, especially when scrolling through applications. The screen is AMOLED technology, which gives it very good brightness and sharpness compared to an IPS. As you can see, the screen looks pretty good, with good contrast and color, as well as very well-defined viewing angles, and you can see the phone perfectly from anywhere. As for testing it with games, well, in this case, like always I've tested it with Call of Duty Mobile. When I started the game, something that pleasantly surprised me is that the graphics options let us put almost all of them on the highest setting. This actually speaks quite well of both the graphics power and the processor. The game runs very smoothly once we're in-game. Graphically, it looks pretty good, although I have experienced some minor stuttering or slowdown at specific times. It hasn't been anything major, but it has taken away a little bit of smoothness. In any case, I would recommend playing this type of game with the graphic quality set a little below the maximum to give the phone a bit more breathing room. I think the battery life is quite good. The 5000 mAh battery works quite well and the phone is thin enough to have that much battery life. The camera, however, is a little weak for the phone's range. There are other phones from other brands that have slightly better cameras for the same price, but that doesn't mean that this camera is bad either. As for the options, it does have some modes appreciated in this range, like the Pro mode, for instance, to capture in RAW. Regarding the photos themselves, well, let's see. During the day with the main lens, we can observe a good amount of detail, acceptable contrast, and a dynamic range quite suited to the scene. It's nothing extraordinary, but the photos don't turn out poorly at all. With the wide-angle lens, we see a resolution difference. Obviously, we get a wider field of view than with the main lens, but we're going to drop noticeably in sharpness and a bit in color interpretation as well. Even so, it's true that this sensor is average in terms of what we can see in this price range. When night falls, as always, the photography struggles with lack of light. Even so, the main camera holds up, provided there is some light. With the night mode, greater sharpness is attained at the edges, though the image does become a bit grainy. Anyway, I recommend using it to increase the light and thus get better results. As for the video, I honestly think it's the weakest point of the camera since staying at 30 frames per second and full HD makes it look a bit rough and not very fluid. All in all, the V40 SE is an acceptable option if you're looking for a phone up to $300. Also at the moment, if you want to get a good bundle with the fast charging charger and headphones, it suits you super well. It's true that this phone won't offer you anything out of the ordinary in this range. It has good RAM, good storage, good battery, and a default camera. Where I think it falls a little short, and I have to say it, is in the processor. For those $300, it mounts a Snapdragon 4 Gen 2, which is a processor from last year. It's a fairly contained processor focused on optimizing consumption rather than performance. As I said, the phone isn't bad, but we can't ask too much of it either. Well guys, that's the end of the review of the Vivo V40 SE. As always, if the video has been useful to you, don't forget to leave me a good like, which is super important. As well as subscribe to the channel, and click on the bell so you don't miss anything. I, for my part, nothing more. As always, a pleasure, and until the next video.